Hey there, welcome back to another video this time around. It is my review of the 2020 slasher film, Freaky. Now, this is honestly one of my favorite slashers of the 2020s. Uh, and one of my favorite horror films from uh, this uh, decade so far. I really enjoy this film. I think this film is a genuine like modern cult classic in the genre. It's a blast. It's so much fun to watch. And I think it could be better in a few areas, but even those things aren't really enough to really drag it down that much for me. Uh, but before I get around to sharing more of my thoughts on Freaky, I would like to give a special shout out to Andrew for requesting this review. And if there's another film, TV show, or topic that you would like to see me discuss in the future, feel free to donate to either my PayPal or to my Patreon. The link to both is in the video description down below, and I will try to get your request as soon as I possibly can. Now, Freaky is directed by Christopher Landon, who I think is one of the better filmmakers in the horror genre today. Uh, I know he was uh, attached to the uh, Scream 7, uh, but he wound up uh, getting let go because I guess he didn't really fit with what they were trying to do or whatever. It's not his fault. Uh, I think the man is still a, a really solid director. I mean, he did, he did some really good work in Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse the the two Happy Death Day movies, this film. I mean, this movie features some just really sharp, slick, and stylish direction. Uh, some really ambitious and fun camera work. I mean, there are wide shots, there are zooms, there are pans. There's also shots where the camera will be looking down at a character from the top, like from the sky, looking down. And, or, you know, having people looking up and, and the, there's just a lot about this camera work that is just very lively and energetic and really a lot of fun. It, it, it's a fun film and it just has this fun visual style throughout. Uh, he even utilizes lighting really well, like in the black light uh, mini golf sequence and there's just a lot to genuinely really uh, appreciate about his direction. Uh, the kills are all shot in ways that really do emphasize the, the grisly violence and the blood and gore and the intensity of the scenes. Uh, when the sequence is supposed to be more comedic, it's got a good comedic uh, sense of timing to it. Uh, when scenes need to be a little bit more thrilling, create some tension. They also are able to effectively convey that through the visuals as well as, you know, other aspects of, of the overall production. But yeah, the direction in my opinion is it's great. It's really good stuff. Uh, you can definitely tell that this is a guy who is having a blast. He's having a ball. He's having the, such a great time shooting this particular film and it's a big part of why it's just so much fun to watch now uh the screenplay by michael kennedy and christopher landon i also feel is top notch along with the direction for the most part there are a couple things that i think could have been done a little bit better but other than those little things which i'll get to soon enough i genuinely feel this is a really good script uh for one it's not your typical slasher film. Yes, it has some meta uh, uh, lines here or there, but it's not overly meta. And on top of that, it takes the body swap subgenre and slaps it into a slasher. And it's a surprisingly good fit. And it really injects some genuine new blood and new life into the slasher genre because there really wasn't a body swap slasher film before Freaky. So it actually was something kind of unique for once in this genre. And it also helps that I just, I enjoy those kinds of movies anyway. They're, they're fun. Uh, so it, it's a lot of fun to, to take elements of like Freaky Friday and then throw in a slasher film on top of that. And, and I genuinely, uh, really love the way that things open up 
where it's like you're watching a traditional slasher film with the Blissfield butcher uh, butchering some teens. They're telling a story about the butcher and the teens are acting like, oh, that's a bunch of bullshit. There's no way that that's real. And then the butcher actually shows up and kills them all in various gory ways. One death in particular uh, really stands out. It's with a wine bottle where the butcher takes the wine bottle and shoves it down this guy's throat. And you see the bottle bulging in his throat and then he smashes the bottle and then you see the glass like just poke right through his throat and send blood spraying everywhere like it's a really uh grisly and and uh a genuinely gross kill but it's what you want out of a slasher movie and it's not it's it's a kill that i honestly don't remember seeing before in other slashers so that was really nice to see a kill that was uh, actually somewhat kind of different than what you've already seen before. Uh, and there's just a very warped, sly sense of humor, too, in this opening sequence with the way that he's killing these people. Uh, there's a guy who gets a tennis racket, uh, two sides of a tennis racket shoved into the side of his head, so it looks like the tennis racket went all the way through his head, like that old arrow trick that Steve Martin used to do all the time on stage. And... There's other little bits like that, and it's just a fun opening sequence. I also like the way that it sets up, like, it's Thursday, it's Wednesday the 11th, you know, and then, and then the next day is Thursday the 12th, and then when the swap finally happens, it's Friday the 13th. I, I, I love that, too. There's a lot of cheeky, tongue-in-cheek, uh, fun bits of uh, satire and comedy in this that if you're a fan of the slasher genre, you'll you'll definitely see what they're trying to go for and 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 you'll you'll get a kick out of it. So I, I love the opening. I think it does a great job establishing the characters. Um and really like you genuinely do sympathize with and like Millie. She's bullied at school She's shy and withdrawn and reserved and, and lacks a lot of self-confidence and you root for her. You want her to find a way to ask a book her out and, and go to homecoming instead of going to some lame uh, production of Wicked with her mom. Like, you want her to do well and to be happy. And you get a good sense of just how dysfunctional her family is and and why she might be the way that she is. Uh, and the friend group that she has is also not annoying either. Nyla and Josh, the way that they're written, they actually seem like cool teens. Yeah, one of them is gay, but it's not like it's an in-your-face kind of thing all the time. It's not this whole, I'm gay, so I'm prosecuted, or I'm persecuted, or I'm this or that. Like, there's not any, there's not really a lot of that at all in the script. Like, he's gay, but it's not one of those things where it becomes like a social commentary thing. He's just a gay friend, and that's it. Uh, and he's actually has some of the funniest uh, lines and funniest moments in the movie. Uh, her friend Nyla, you really do buy very early, early on that she's very close with uh, Millie as if they're sisters. And the killer, you don't really you don't really get a lot of depth with him, but you don't really need that. And when the swap happens and you have Millie in the killer's body and then the killer is in Millie's body, like there's a really strong and fun dynamic there that's enough to carry a lot of those scenes. Uh, so it's just a lot of fun to see the killer in uh, the the body of this teenage girl and try to you know figure out how he can utilize this smaller body to his advantage when it comes to taking out people and killing people and him learning on the fly and learning different ways to kill people that don't just involve uh, pure physicality, like what he was able to get away with before. And then, you know, having Millie who's used to being this small uh, girl who's easily overpowered and bullied dealing with being in this t tall, strong body. And then like, you know, <laughs> 
you know, bumping into things and being clumsy and then utilizing her strength to get back at the bully. Um, and there's a lot of heart to this script too, which I really liked there. There's a lot of heart involving the characters, Millie and her friends, or the, the relationship that starts to bud between Millie and, and Booker. It's genuinely sweet. And so that adds some extra stakes for Millie finding a way to be able to get back her body and yeah, the whole body swapping thing with the knife, you know, it's, it's definitely over the top, but like, how else were you going to do it? Like it's, it, it's definitely something that was going to be, uh, kind of, uh, crazy, wild, maybe a bit corny anyway. So I, I was okay with it. I didn't really have a problem with it in terms of the body swapping knife. And there's just a lot to really like about this. And it's not just the gore, but the gore is great too. I mean, the, the, the kills are definitely some genuine crowd pleasers. If you're a fan of, you know, the, the gory goods, so to speak. I mean, there's a whole scene involving the shop teacher where he gets cut in half lengthwise, uh, with a table saw. Uh, but I will say this maybe due to the motion picture association of America and the rating and all that, the finale at the mill, it's not as satisfying when it comes to the kills. There are these three asshole jocks who basically are insinuating that they're going to gang bang and sexually assault Millie. Uh, but you know, this is, uh, this is when the killer, the, uh, the butcher is in the body of Millie, but there's these three uh, asshole jocks and one of them gets his throat slashed with a broken uh, bottle, which I'm like, really? We already kind of did the bottle thing in the beginning. Like, why are we doing that again? That's kind of lazy. And then the other guy, he gets chainsawed, but you don't see anything. Uh, uh, the butcher in Millie's body gets the chainsaw and lowers it down. I think it's insinuating it's lowering it down where his privates are. And then it's just, a shot of, of a uh, Millie with blood spraying on her face and the guy screaming and that's it. You don't see anything. You don't see limbs getting cut off. You don't see a damn thing. So that was, that was a letdown. And there was a third guy who dies too. And I think it seems like he just dies off screen. You just see his dead body later on. Uh, there was one other guy who starts coming on to the gay guy because he's also gay. But of course, He's a, he's a football player and he's a popular jock. So he's like, you don't, don't tell anyone or I'll kill you. And then the, uh, the butcher pops at her arm through the wall and has a hook and stabs him in the eye and drags him through the wall. I like that, but it could have used a little bit more with the, the, the hook going into the eye, but you don't really get a lot of that because of the fact that I think. I genuinely do feel it's one of those things where either it's a budget thing or it's a, a, a motion picture association of America thing where oh, we can't go any further because then we'll get a X rating, but you should have shot the scenes anyway. So then you could have an unrated cut on Blu-ray uh, for the fans, because that is a bit of a letdown. I have to be honest, like it sets it up where it's going to be this big bloodbath at this mill with all these teenagers who were now sitting ducks for this killer and the body count is kind of low. So I will say that's a bit of, let, of a letdown. And so is how the butcher gets taken out. Initially, it seems like he's taken out by, by being shot a few times, which I'm glad they didn't stick with that because that would have been really lame. But then he's still alive and he corners Millie, who's now found a way to get back into her body again. So he corners her in her own home and Millie's family wind up fighting him and overpowering him. And then she takes like a, a piece of wood and, and stabs him through the chest with it. I like the tag. I like the one liner that she says, I am a fucking piece. I, I like that, but just a little stab through the chest, like, eh, like, especially for everything this guy has done and for how many people this guy has killed, like that was a little lame. So I'll give it, I, I will definitely give it uh, a, a bit of a, um, 
dock, so to speak. I'll dock some uh some credits uh for uh for that cuz that was definitely not something that was super satisfying, but at least it wasn't just him getting shot and then dying in the ambulance cuz that would have been that would have been absolutely terrible. So I'm glad they didn't do that. But it also doesn't have a sequel bait ending, which I was surprised by and Honestly, I'm really happy for. You don't need everything to have a franchise. It's fine to just have a standalone film and a standalone story. Doesn't need to be a franchise. You don't need sequels all the time. So I like that. I like that it was like, nope, it's done. It's over with. The Blissfield Butcher is dead. The knife isn't going to do anything anymore. Millie's back in her body. Uh, and she now gets to kiss Booker for real. And, uh, she's back with her friends and her family and all is well. Like, I'm like, cool, great. I, I don't really have a problem with the way that it ends at all. Like, that's another reason why I like it a lot. Cause it actually has one of those endings where everyone you like is, is still alive by the end of the movie. And it's got a nice, sweet ending to it. And it feels earned and, there's a lot of sweetness to it too, in terms of just the heart of the script, like that whole scene where Millie, when she's in the body of the butcher and she's over, uh, at, uh, um, Millie's, uh, mom's, uh, workplace, this discount mart, and he's hiding in the dressing room and Millie's mom is spilling her guts and pouring her heart out about her dead husband and what's going on with her daughter and Millie while she's in the body of, of this butcher comforts her mother. Like that's a really sweet scene that honestly, uh, does a lot for this script because that's the kind of extra attention to detail and extra depth that you don't always get with these kind of films or these kind of horror comedies. And I also really like the comedy, like for the most part, it's really funny. There's a lot of really great, funny uh, moments. Uh, the different sort of exchanges between the characters uh, is uh, definitely really entertaining. And yeah, it provides what you want out of a film like this. It's got a good pace to it. It uh, doesn't really take too long with a lot of the plot points and a lot of other different elements of the story. Uh, it does a good job with the body swap stuff. It's not completely, totally cliched, but at points there are some cliches, but it's just the kind of thing that just comes with the territory when it comes to this kind of movie. The kills, for the most part, are fun and definitely do bring uh, the, the gory goods. And it's just an entertaining, fun ride of a, of a slasher film. It really is. Uh as good as the script is, though, the cast is a major reason why this works as well as it does, specifically the two leads, like Vince Vaughn and Catherine Newton, because without the right actor and the right actress to play these roles, because they have to play each other throughout the movie, it really wouldn't have worked. So you need to have the right actress who can believably play the shy, insecure teenager and also the conniving, ruthless killer inside of her body, as well as, you know, the guy who can play the hulking, uh, intimidating killer, but also play the, the shy, insecure girl in a killer's body. So you need to be able to effectively play both of those roles and i think both actors they just do an amazing job they have great chemistry with one another they seem like they are on the same wavelength which is definitely what you need when it comes to this kind of film and honestly i think it's one of the best things vince vaughn has done in years uh, I think he made up for the Psycho remake in some capacity for his performance in this. Uh, and I think he did a much better job playing, you know, a girl in a guy's body, for instance, than what Jack Black was trying to do in the Jumanji sequels. Um, Catherine Newton, I mean, Catherine Newton is just, she's great, but she's honestly great in almost everything that she's in. Like, she's a new 
scream queen for me. I mean, she's really good in this, and she was equally as great in um, Lisa Frankenstein that came out earlier this year, and Abigail. So I am a huge fan of hers. So I'm really looking forward to seeing whatever she does next. Uh, and this is definitely one of her best roles. Like I, I, I just really thought it was just a really great performance by her. It was honestly something you could see in a John Hughes film in the eighties or like an eighties horror movie. Now you also have like Katie Finneran who plays, uh, Millie's mother, Coral. She does a good job too. Uh, but I would say the other main stand-up performers are Celeste O'Connor, who plays Nyla, uh, Misha Osarovich as Josh, uh, the two best friends. Uh, they had really good chemistry with Catherine as well, and they had good chemistry with one another, and they they definitely had a lot of fun with their roles, and you could definitely tell that was the case, and it just made for a really fun uh, uh, time when the two were... Um, on screen together or they're working with Vince Vaughn who is playing Millie in the butcher's body. And yeah, they had good, really excellent chemistry with Vince as well. And you also have Alan Ruck who plays Mr. Bernardi, this abusive and just unsympathetic woodshop teacher who's the complete and total opposite of the usual character that Alan Ruck portrays in a lot of films that he does. So it just showcases his range as an actor. He can play the really sweet, good-mannered uh, bus rider on Speed or uh, a, a co-star in Twister as one of the tornado chasers, or he can play Cameron and Ferris Bueller, but he can also play a abusive asshole uh, a shop teacher. You also have Ariah Shelton, who plays Booker. He's a, He's just kind of a mixed bag for me. Like this is a performance that's like not entirely terrible, but it's not great either. Cause there's some moments with this line delivery, which or it's pretty brutal, but I felt that there were some moments with him and Vince Vaughn in particular, and some moments with him and Catherine that were good, but there's a lot of stuff with this character. That's just, it's kind of stiff when it comes to his line delivery. Uh, Melissa Colazzo was Ryler. She definitely did a great job playing a bitchy character. Uh, she would have been right at home in Hevers. Um, but yeah, for the most part, good cast. Also want to mention uh, uh, Dana Drory, who plays uh, Char, Millie's older sister. So for the most part, really good cast. Uh, the cinematography by Lori Rose. I think for the most part, it works very well with the movie. Fits with Christopher Landon's vision for the film. It's not anything, though, that's really going to wow you. It's not going to dazzle you like some other films do when it comes to the cinematography. But it looks good enough for the, the film that this is. The editing by Ben uh, Bauduhin, I felt for the most part, was not bad. There are a couple moments where maybe it could have been edited a bit tighter. But for the most part, I felt it had some uh, good polished editing in it. The music by Bear McCreary... Not really one of his most memorable scores, but it worked for the film. Uh, the more memorable uh, musical bits were songs that they used for the soundtrack. They even had Que Sera Sera from Heathers, which I thought was a fun little touch. And there's some other sort of, uh, at the time, modern tracks that they used uh, for the soundtrack. Some, some hip-hop, some trap beats, some other stuff that, you know, fit all right for the scene and, and for, for the overall film. Uh, and I think it's paced pretty tightly. It's like 101 minutes, but that's with the end credits without the end credits is only like an hour and 30 something minutes. So yeah, overall, I, I, I really enjoy it. I, I would say if you, if you like the happy death day movies, this is definitely something you should check out. Um, if you're a fan of, you know, slashers, there's definitely a lot to enjoy when it comes to this movie. Um, so yeah, I, I would recommend it. I, I would honestly highly recommend it. Um, I think it's a gem, but anyway, that's my uh, review of freaky. And until next time, I'll see you later. See ya.